What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop. I'm your host, Damon Hadfield. Joining me this week is Tina Amini. Hello, Scoop. Sam Claiborne. Hey, everybody. Last week was really scary. And Ryan McCaffrey. Hello. And we've got a great show for you planned this week. The first show of November 2018. We're going to talk about Diablo 3 on Switch, which Ryan McCaffrey reviewed and I've been playing a bit of. We're going to talk about Super Smash Bros. Ultimate because there's just new news out this morning, direct from Nintendo. Direct from Nintendo. But first... We have the full lineup for the PlayStation Classic, which is uh, that was released this week. The PlayStation Classic is coming in December, just about a month away. Everyone get a chance to check out this this game lineup. I really like that you put together the the IGN average review score for oh, all yeah. these, which we we yeah, we couldn't cool. do for the uh, NES Classic. And, they're too old. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're too old. Yeah, IGN yeah. hasn't been around quite that long. Yeah, yeah. To clarify, I didn't put that together. Someone in the comments did, oh, fair and enough. I just okay. retweeted them. But yeah, it was like the, all twenty games is like an average of seven point eight. 7.8. Yeah. Which maybe is, is a little low for uh, a game lineup that's supposed to represent this console's lineup. I mean, I saw universal backlash about this yeah. list. Nobody likes well, it. But nobody I don't likes know what to think. I think I there are like titles things. that people like, but overall, as a selection that's supposed to be representative of like the PlayStation's first foray into mm -hmm. games or whatever, yeah. um, seems like it's a, a weird amalgamation of choices. Is yeah. the like reception that I've heard. The value yeah, proposition a better way to this say one's a little trickier, I think. Hundred dollars. Yeah, twenty games. More games than the SNES Classic or NES Classic. So yeah. eh, but they're bigger know. games, that's for sure. That's to true. some people, I They're guess all it's all era specific, right? For me, like NES Classic specifically was that was the one that just went right to my heart. Yeah. Whereas uh, PS Classic, not quite as much for me personally. I guess it was easier because you have a bunch of titles that are just like you know they're like li the like Activision doesn't hold the licenses for some of them, or like there's music licensing issues. There are remasters yeah. happening, like with Spyro and Crash Bandicoot, so you can't include those on the list. So there's a lot of like caveats, I guess, that make yeah. it a little bit more of a complicated list to choose from. I think people also find that you know 16-bit games have just aged better True. than these early. Although I'm early looking forward games. to okay. plugging those into a, a TV with a good emulator, yeah. and seeing how they look. I, I agree. Like with maybe you. they'll be cleaned up, and I don't. I mean, I'm starting to feel nostalgic for very funny early 3D graphics. It's just if the game's hard to play, then it's not as fun. Like Star Fox 2 was like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is also a, a, an opportunity for you, Sam, because uh, the PlayStation was kind of a blind spot for you. Yeah, but when I looked at the list, like there's very few games on there that people have recommended to me that <laughs> I have to go back and play. Like I'm not like. Like seriously, like I'm not gonna play Rayman, Rayman. Yeah. Like I don't care <laughs> Rayman. about Rayman. Everybody loves Rayman, <laughs> <laughs> except for me. What about Intelligent yeah, Cube? Uh, I don't know anything about Intelligent Cube, but you said it's cool. Yeah. There's a Puzzle Fighter on there, right? Super Puzzle Fighter Two Turbo is on there. But like basically, like when I am thinking about the list of games that I missed, it's like you know Final Fantasy VIII and uh, yeah, which is Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis is not on there. Yeah. And but we have that at your desk now, so. <laughs> yes, yes, we do have Dino Crisis now to play. Uh, but Mr. Driller, I hear, is good. Mr. Driller, which is, you know, a 2D arcade game. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll read the list here in case uh, any of our viewers and listeners uh, haven't checked it out yet. And, and, and then give your personal score for each one. In alphabetical oh order, <laughs> Battle Arena Toshinden, early 3D fighter. Cool Borders 2, snowboarding game. Destruction Derby, I assume it's, a, it's all there in the title. I that is. I, I don't, don't see, I'm actually with you. Yeah, yeah, I, was, uh, I had switched after... Uh, when PlayStation came out, I had moved over to, to mm -hmm. PC gaming. Doom converted mm -hmm. me yeah. for many years. Yeah, so. A Klonoa is another one that I really want to play that's not on here. Not on the list. Let's keep going. Final Fantasy VII is the original Grand Theft Auto, which is interesting. Top, top, down, top down game. Little Grand Theft Auto. Intelligent <laughs> Cube, the puzzle game. Jumping Flash, which was a launch title. Yeah, I actually uh, think that game's kind of cool. Pretty cool, weird little game. Metal Gear you're Solid. Metal Gear Solid, it'll be interesting to play that without the rumble uh, feature of the, of the DualShock. Uh, Mr. Driller, like we said, Oddworld Abe's Odyssey, very cool game, but again, a 2D game. Rayman, Resident Evil Director's Cut, Revelations Persona, a Persona game is on the list, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> Old Farble I don't Pro. know what that game is. Well, no, so like that one doesn't even have any of like the dating or socializing really? yeah. thing, so it's like not the most representative of this, or at least not most representative of what the series has become, so yeah. it's also another Interesting, because it's like a deep Japanese RPG cut. I yeah, that's kind of cool. I think so. But Dragon Quest would have been better. Ridge Racer Type 4. <laughs> of course. Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Siphon Filter. That's cool. I, yeah, I, I mean, like, that. I would like to revisit that. I haven't. I've only played a PSP one. Yeah, I haven't played that since it was probably first released. Tekken 3, the original Rainbow Six. I don't know how that. I, 
What's that? Wow. Yeah. That's, that's the original Rainbow Six. I like can't a... imagine that's going to go well, or it, I can't imagine it went well at the time yeah. on the original mm-hmm. PlayStation. What a weird inclusion. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, that is, it's a very... Do you think it's more single-player focused? It was right? then, and it's, I was going to say, it's, it's really, it was really tactical in the beginning. Like, you okay. literally, you would plan out your routes mm-hmm. of where you wanted to bring your team and, like, how you wanted to breach a, a building. Maybe that didn't make it into the, like, I don't know... I don't know anything about the PlayStation port. Yeah. But the PC, original PC version was yeah. <laughs> was pretty hardcore. That's a funny one. Well, we'll see how that holds up. Finally, it's uh, Twisted Metal and Wild Arms. Wild Arms being another JRPG. Yeah, that's a big JRPG too, right? Like a, a cool popular one. So that's cool that it's in there. Yeah. Um, Twisted Metal has sequels and stuff like that, but mm. I remember that being like the like party game for a little while. Yeah. yeah. Well, everyone yeah. thought like Twisted Metal 2 is a lot more polished, so okay. that's another one that's okay. been tripping people up as far as I've seen from reactions gotcha. online. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know there's only out of like Metacritic's top twenty, there's only four on this list. Oh, that's interesting. Oh wow. Out of the top twenty PlayStation oh. games. Yeah. Got them? Which wait, which one? Yeah, can one? you guess which ones? Or which are, I just which tell are the you? four? Um you want me to just tell you and spoil it? Yeah, just spoil us. <laughs> okay. Tekken three. Yep. Uh Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid, Final Fantasy Seven, uh Resident Evil. Did I list four? The original oh, Resident four. Evil's on there? Yeah. Uh, so, like, what are some of the top 20 that aren't on there? Do you know? Okay, I have, have the full those? list of yeah. Metacritic like top every 20. Final Fantasy. Um, and this is in order. So, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, yeah. uh, Tekken 3, Gran Turismo, Final Fantasy 9, Chrono Cross, Metal Gear Solid, Gran Turismo 2, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Castlevania, Wipeout, Vagrant Story, Tony Hawk Pro Skater, yeah. um, Final Fantasy 7, Medal of Honor, Parappa the Rapper, which would have been a good inclusion. Oh, yeah, Parappa, I forgot. Yeah. But it already got, yeah. like, a, a remaster. Oh, that's re-release. true, yeah. That shouldn't fair. matter. Well... Because there's the virtual console has all the games that are on the NES Classic yeah. and the Super yeah. NES Classic. But I guess for a hundred dollars, like yeah. you want to offer something new for people. Yeah. Um, Colony Wars, Spyro, uh, Tomb Raider, which a lot of people were upset that Tomb Raider wasn't on there. But then I saw a lot of people also say, well, it's it hasn't play, aged yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and then Resident Evil and Legacy of Kane. That's the top twenty. Legacy yeah. of Kane would have been a really interesting one. I want to play. Yeah. So some of those, I understand, licensing issues are going to make it impossible, like Tony yep. Hawk. Yep. But then well, there's stuff like... Well, Activ- Activision just... <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> they're going to want their cut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but then there's stuff like, like Chrono Cross. I don't see any reason why that couldn't be on there. Yeah, that would have been a really cool inclusion. It was too obvious a choice for Sony. Yeah, like, yeah I guess so. We the the system in the box is enough for me, though. I think it's so cool looking, and I think mm. it's so neat that it's plug and play that I'm like I'm all in. It's just... Mm. I, You're I, cool I, with the controllers? The nostalgia aspect is like good enough? What do you mean? Because the controls have just advanced so much, I feel like going backwards yeah. technology wise. Oh, well, like, just yeah. the D pad. The PlayStation yeah. 4 controller isn't that far removed from the PlayStation 1 controller. Oh, really? <laughs> well, just how it feels. It's not like it's. Yeah, I guess like grip wise. Oh, the Genesis controller. <laughs> <laughs> you mean yeah. the kidney? Yeah, it feels insane. <laughs> it's so much extra plastic and nonsense. Yeah. And then there's like three buttons, and they, they all do the same thing in Sonic. Every button does the same thing. <laughs> There's three of them. I don't yeah. know how to operate without the two joysticks, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I'm a you know I, I love D pads and I love yeah. uh, you know Nintendo controllers. The Super Nintendo controller I think is perfect, so I think I'm gonna be fine with that. Mm. There's two, right? Two controllers. Two controllers. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 yeah so what games two. are good two player games? Uh, well, the fighting games, of course, Tekken Three, Battle Arena Toshinden. Um, and I, I'm sure, like Super Puzzle Fighter Two Turbo, yeah, it's a great two player game. And is Mr. Driller? A, a Mr. Driller, I don't. It's not. It'll just like alternating. Okay. Two players, that sort of thing. Just metal. What about in, what is it called? Intelligent Cube. Cube. Yeah. I think that's a single player game. Okay. But I do think uh, there are like the remasters and re-releases keep or you know affect games like Parappa not being on here and like Resident Evil Two is being remade. Yeah. Symphony in the Night was just re-released yeah. last week, so that's why. That is think. weird. What a weird confluence. And then also Spyro, I think you already mentioned. Yep. Yeah, Crash. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I do think that's that really cuts. You know, but like, still, like, I don't see why. Like, this is a different thing. It's yeah, like it's, you it's don't a have to have a play console toy. for it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not. You know, it's not a con. You don't. Yeah. It's, there's a lower barrier of entry to this than there mm-hmm. is a you know buying a remake of something on PS4. Yeah. They should have just made it like 30 titles, and then the last 10 are bonuses. So throw in a Crash and a Spyro. Mm-hmm. Unlockables. Yeah. yeah. That'd be fun. Anyway, the uh, PlayStation Classic is out December third. It's a hundred bucks. People have mixed feelings about it. Are there are they still available for pre order? Like, can you so. still get one? I, I know that was so. the whole thing. We had thing a pre order with... link this morning. Okay, so it. that's. But I, I think it goes in and out. Yeah. Let's move on to Diablo 3 on Switch, which is out tomorrow or probably right now if you are uh, listening to the show. Ryan, you reviewed it. You gave it a nine. I did, yeah. It's really good, right? It's, 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 it's the same game. Now it's portable. So I expected it to play well. Yeah. Um, I was, after watching the trailers, when they finally, you know, this game's been rumored for like an eternity. Yeah. Yeah. And now, uh, and then when, when it was finally announced, 
the trailers were like, oh, I don't know, the image quality, like, mm, we'll see about that. I'm not, it's not necessarily what year looking. did Diablo come out? Uh, 2012. Yeah. For, for the original PC release of Diablo 3. Okay. And then in 2014, it came to Xbox One and PS4 with the Reaper of Souls expansion that also added, like, not only new content, but just really, really kind of fixed the game, basically, yeah. in a lot of ways. But a 2012 game should be fine on Switch. Yeah, and it turns that's, out it is. Yeah, uh, but it, it looks great. <laughs> it runs great. We had a four-player online going, which, yes, you do need your Nintendo Online subscription to play online, but there's also in the room multiplayer as well. That you don't need it for? Correct. Okay. Uh, and we could not, we were just all setting off our crazy attacks and special moves. We could not get the frame rate to buckle at all. It was a nice solid 60 frames a second. Uh, it feels great on the Switch in portable mode. Yeah. Uh, it's totally fine on the like on the on the big TV. We have a 65 inch 4K TV out here in the uh, IGN pit, and so I was playing it on there a bit. And like the environments still look really great. The the character detail, the characters look a you know that's where you kind of can see it mm. a little bit. The the sort of adjustments they made to make sure it it runs well on the Switch hardware. But by and large, yeah, I mean this is the complete edition of Diablo three because it's got every piece of content ever, including the Necromancer. Um, the and the Reaper of Souls expansion. So it's just, it is Diablo 3 Complete Edition. The actual name of it is the Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. Mm. And yeah, it's it still plays great and you can play Diablo anywhere you want, which is, I mean, that's a big selling point, but yeah. it, it works. Is it I mean, a good like playing game? I've never even played it. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that was really, really good. I, the time just like it's easy. I went in thinking, yeah, cool. so this was, we kind of designate here, we'll have uh, full reviews, but sometimes we do short reviews too, yeah. where it's like, you know, in this case, where it was, a, it was a, a port to a new console of something that does exist elsewhere already. And I thought, all right, I'll just play, I'm going to play through act one just to get to act two. And, you know, do some multiplayer for sure. That's going to be the big thing to test with this review. I ended up playing into Act 3 because I just couldn't stop myself. It's yeah. Diablo is still, still so much fun, still so good. What would be the loop in just a few words? Like, what, what I mean, what's it's, fun? Diablo is the, I don't want to say the original, but it's, it's really sort of the quintessential uh, dungeon crawler loot game mm. where you're killing monsters, getting loot, they're dropping items, gold, and it's just that loop of... The reward improving, system. Yeah, improving yeah. your yeah. character, just getting better, getting more powerful. Yeah. Before you know it, you're just like, you're just, I'm, I always play a barbarian, so before long, I'm just like literally leaping around the screen, crushing things, monsters exploding, just, it's, oh, uh, it's, it's, it's like fireworks in video game form. Yeah. It seriously looks like that, and I played it um, at Gamescom, and I, I personally felt like on, in handheld mode, it was just a little too busy, because Diablo is that. It's fireworks on the screen, yeah. especially if you're playing with, like, three other people. At one point in time, I was just like, where are, where are my people around yeah. me, and, like, what, what am I fighting currently? And there's just explosions and colors, and did you feel like it was a lot on the screen when you played it? No, I mean, I, maybe, it's, maybe I'm just used to it, to be yeah. fair. Like, you know, if you're, if you're sort of coming at it from a little bit of a fresher perspective than I was, you know, you, in multiplayer Player, you do get the colored P1, P2, P like old yeah. school arcade circles. But it's so small. It is, yeah, that's I feel fair. Like I go blind looking um, at it. But you know, you're you're basically always the focal point on your yeah. on your screen. So I, I can Who respect that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's like a sixty bucks. It is sixty dollars. It is that's, full price. I want to point out a lot of the conversation about is that is this shouldn't be sixty dollars. Mm. I, I don't. But. It didn't bother me because it has everything. Like yeah. the 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 rise of the Necromancer DLC was fifteen. Mm. Uh, Reaper of Souls was an ex, you know expansion from a few years ago. So it's got everything in a po highly polished, complete portable version. So does it have cheat codes? So, because it's you know that would have ruined the integrity of multiplayer. Yeah, and is multiplayer like essential? It, no, I, I <clears throat> I've spent most of my Diablo career playing solo. Certainly yeah. with Diablo three, but it did have like an economy when it launched and stuff like that. So maybe they that's all. Got, I mean, that, that was yeah. all. I know patched it's gone. Out years they, they, they wouldn't have ago. put in that. The auction would have house hurt that right. So oh, yeah. So then that's probably what yeah. It Diablo is. one and two were notorious for being like cheated and exploited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, Diablo I three fun with that. Not yeah. so much. Yeah. So yeah. Sam just wants to know how many like wiki pages he needs. <laughs> well, that's how his brain works. <laughs> I'm really happy that Red Dead has cheats in it. It's, it's been really fun. Like I think it's really cool to yeah. allow people to break your game, whether it's Fallout mods or whatever. But I think it's really. Cool. But yeah, I mean, if, if this was my third to, to sum up, this was my third. Uh, I'm a triple dipper on mm. when it comes to Diablo 3. Played it on PC originally because I'm I'm a huge Diablo. Diablo 2 
is probably in my top five games ever. Love Diablo 1 as well. And so I was so anxious. It was such a long wait for Diablo 3. And then when it finally came out in 2012, it was flawed. It was not... Act 4 was terrible. Uh, it didn't... It just There were flaws with it. But when I came at it again on Xbox One... Right. Uh, with the Reaper of Souls, the stuff I mentioned earlier, it it turns out Diablo. I actually think it plays better on a console. Mm. The rare case That's where cool. I actually think it plays better uh, with the direct input control and the couch co-op, uh, uh, and now this like this that. Switch version, the fact that it's it's all of that uh, plus portability. Yeah, it's you don't fantastic. miss hotkeys. I mean, no, not in not the way the game's designed. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I but, agree. So you said you're, it's in your top five. I'm trying to think. Diablo of two. two. Diablo two. What what else is in Ryan's top five? Well, Halo one. I would. Halo two. I Halo think would two. get the nod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything older than that? Uh, Doom. There's got to be a. Mm-hmm. It's got to be Super Mario Brothers three. Mario where, three. Yes. Which which <laughs> Splinter Cell? Which Splinter Cell and where? <laughs> well, Chaos Theory. I don't know if it would quite crack my personal top five. You only top ten more, for you only sure. Only one more slot. Yeah, I don't even know. We'd have no to. No Forza. Not in my that not top here. five is rarefied yeah. air. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've been fair. playing games for thirty years. Yeah. I'm thirty eight <laughs> years old. So Mario three though. No, oh, definitely Mario that's, three. That's the Mario. Yeah. But Doom, I always think that's really cool. Here. I know you've done a lot of that Doom, coverage of Doom. Doom was one of those Doom's a great one. Doom was one of those changed my life kind of games. Like mm-hmm. not in a grand like, you know, literal personal way, yeah. but as far as my sort of gaming life and gaming perspective, like, that's like Bubble Bobble. Doom for was yeah yeah. yeah. Anyway, this Which, has been the Ryan call- McCaffrey segment of Game Scoop. <laughs> Let's move on to everyone else. Uh, I've actually haven't played Diablo one or two. I wish they would dust those off and sort of re- there, remaster there were, those. There have been rumors. There were job postings yeah. a while back that Dia- for like people to work on making Diablo two work on modern PCs, yeah. and we haven't seen anything of that. But then again, you know, Blizzard takes their time with stuff, so True. they could just drop at any BlizzCon like, "Hey, you can go play Diablo two for free on Battle.net now." So hopefully that'll happen. We yeah. can just wait for the PC Classic system. The, pl- the PC yeah. Classic, <laughs> such a good idea. Just like a little mini. Right. If it runs oh on, God. God. can it run on DOS? Right now, plan the system. <laughs> I, I still remember all my DOS commands. Like <laughs> it's all hard. Ant. It's higher hardwired into my brain. Oh my God! What games would be on the PC? Well, SimCity for sure. Doom. Sim, Sim, Sim City, yes, yeah. absolutely. Doom, Doom would have to be Starcraft, on there. Starcraft, maybe. Uh, Starcraft. Well, that's yeah. a good one. Starcraft depends how old you're going. Old. Yeah. Zork has to be on there. Zork. You could do it by there. era. You could do it like yeah. 80s, 90s. You could do it by decade. Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Half so life. We got to make this ourselves now. What, would it be like the old flat style computer? You'd, you'd have to have like, like tower. A, like a really cute like giant monitor, but miniature version. I got it. it. It's a gateway. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Stupid for the maybe for the 90s. Yeah. Yeah. Mist would be on there. Mist would probably have to be on. And then you'd have to have a graphic adventure like Day of the Tentacle. One of the one of the Lucas Arts games. Yeah. Secret of Monkey Island. King's Quest. Salmon Max. Yeah. Man. Uh, now I really want the sweeper? PC <laughs> Mini to be a thing. Mine Mine sweeper. Sweeper. <laughs> yeah. Solitaire. Solitaire. That's a good idea. <laughs> All right. Okay, moving on. I, I think now we know the full roster, the launch roster for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Is that right? We do. We do mm-hmm. know that. Yeah. 74 yeah. characters. If no you include, banjo. No banjo. Or the what Grinch. What happened? <laughs> When I when the rumor was that Banjo was gonna be in it, is it does the Grinch another one? Yeah, that was That's people good. thought the Grinch was uh, gonna be in it. When I thought when I heard like Banjo could be in it, there was like some talk about like how Microsoft would allow that allow that or why that would happen. Phil would go yes, yeah, go ahead for sure, right? And then and then I started thinking like, what if the announcement is gonna be that Smash is on Xbox also? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a boon for Xbox. That That's for sure. It'd be really cool. <clears throat> Yeah, so we know we know the uh, launch lineup, and there's going to be a DLC plan where I think like five packs, five additional characters and stages released yeah. over the. And next you're going to name them all right now. And here we go. One. No, we don't know what they are, <laughs> uh, but I'm actually more interested in this new single player adventure mode called World of Light. There's a trailer for just that mode alone. Check well, it out. It's more if you of a music yet. video. It's a music video for World of Light. Yeah, <laughs> but I think the idea is that they've all been sort of all the characters have been sort of like. Destroyed and turned into They've dark versions. Infinity gauntlet Dark yeah. versions of themselves. And then Kirby's the only the only one who survived. So you start out as Kirby. Ha- the way I understand it is you have to defeat all the other fighters one by one. And as you defeat them, you can play as them to unlock new areas of this overworld map that you're traveling. It looks and really the map it looks really is cool. like kind of like hand done in like kind of a stylized painterly. Image. But then their characters don't look very good, I didn't think. Like all well, the, 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 the CGI faces. characters in the trailer, I didn't think looked yeah, great. It was a- I do genuinely appreciate this mode, though, because yeah. I've been, like, I just don't have the, 
my the way my life is with how busy yeah. everything is, I don't have time to play online a lot or really right. have like a I, I don't really have a Smash community. So the idea that I ca- I could jump in and have like a a fairly meaty single player yeah. experience that really appeals to me. Yeah, same. Did you hear who's unlocked from the start? Well, it's, it's the Nintendo sixty four. No, no, like oh. in the game. When you get your first character menu, it's only the Nintendo 64 character is unlocked. Oh, you have to unlock all the other characters? You have to unlock all the Well, I like that. That's cool. I I do like that, And I think this, they haven't said this yet, but I think the single player mode will probably be the way you do that. Hmm. But usually there's like all kinds of weird stuff. Like as soon as, you know, Mario jumps 85 times over, you know, something, then then you unlock Luigi. There's like weird stuff like that. But do you think people will be annoyed by that? Like they just want, they buy the game and they want to play as their... Favorite character, but they have yeah. to go through the process. That's of why you them. should include a cheat code yeah. to unlock all characters. <laughs> cheat codes. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this mode. Like like Ryan was saying, I love Nintendo, so I love the, all the fan service that's in Smash Brothers. But I'm just not much of a multiplayer guy. So like now, I have uh, my own whole single player mode that I can enjoy all the fan service that's in there. It's pretty cool. Isn't there a, like a? Didn't they name the main villain too? They, they confirmed well, it was a ton of hands, and then there was that rainbow, yeah, well, that rainbow thing. Yeah, I think the confirmed bosses are like Rathalos, um, Master Hand, and then Galim is the the name of the main villain. What's 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 its know. story? I don't know. Yeah. They just said like something like your your main fiend is Galim and mm. Kirby on the page. Something Maybe it is weird. Kirby. Maybe it is Kirby. It's negative Kirby. I'm all about the piranha Typical. plant, though. Yeah, yeah. That, that's if you what if you buy that's it. The goofiest with, thing. That might be my buy new main. Before yeah. January, you get piranha plant. Yeah. Like, can you move, or are you just situated in one place and your head just? Yeah, because there's characters like, like Rob and stuff that like kind of hover. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess like this how do you is just move? Be, yeah. Like, just I guess you around. got roots. Pop out and, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I didn't look close enough, but there's there's a lot of video of it. It's cool that that's in there. All right, now what do we think about this news? EA said this week that respawn has two games coming by the end of 2019. We know they're doing this Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game, and we also know they've been working on Titanfall 3, so those must be the two games. Okay. Are you surprised well, that they would be coming next year? Yeah, and I hope Titanfall 3 is a Metroidvania that's 2D. <laughs> well, <laughs> can we get work, working on I don't on that? want you to get well, your I don't hopes up. that's going to happen, <laughs> okay. I'm sorry to say. I, I was surprised at first until I looked at the calendar, and mm. Titanfall 2 was fall of 2016. Yeah, so two years. So it'll be three, three years, years. Yeah. or... Mm. Potentially, okay. depending on when in 2019 <clears throat> it releases, you know, even two, even if two and a half, if the game comes out in May, uh, which that would be great because then it stands less of a chance of getting crushed by the other fall first person shooters, which is what yeah. happened to Titanfall 2, uh, <clears throat> despite the fact that Titanfall 2 is, in my opinion, way better than either of them. Uh, it's not to say the others were bad, but yeah, uh, yeah so... You know, it's it's a it's an acceptable window of development time for them to have done Titanfall three, and then the Star Wars game they've been developing that for. So when I I went How there, was there a Star Wars game that's not canceled? It's amazing. Right? <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's uh, there's time yet, and yeah. and the new movie comes out next year. That's true. That's true. When is I, that in May? Or is no. that all the way until the it's winter? December. December. Yeah, it's okay. December. So this is probably going to align with that. Could I mean that would make most the most sense? Yeah. Uh, although next year we're due for a, a Battlefront game. So well, I don't know if they would do two in the in the window, yeah, that's and, and dice tends to be more clockworkish. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, when I they've been developing this Jedi game for a while because when yeah. I I went to respawn to do s- a, a, some sort of shoot for IGN, I think for uh, and it was shortly before Titanfall two came out. So it was you know it was the fall of 2016, and they had a, a, a wing of the building. That was locked off. Yeah, that they told me you Did can't the go. Door open, and you heard like a bunch of like you know Hoth speeder <laughs> sounds. <and stuff. laughs> no, but it was definitely the Star Wars team over there. So they've been in, it's been oh. in the works for a while. Yeah. Don't we know next to nothing about that game? Other than it's a third person yeah. action game. Yeah, yeah. And that's when, pretty when much did it. the name come out? E uh, three. Remember when they weirdly oh, went Oxford. to the, oh, yeah, yeah. in the audience? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sort of crowbarred that's that right. into that's their. That's all we have then. That's it. And well, now we have, but now we have a release year. Yeah. What is pretty exciting. Respawn before it did, uh, it got famous for Titanfall or whatever. Was it doing Call of Duty games? The original, the core of Respawn was formed. It's Vince Zampella and at the time Jason West. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was. It was. Remember when there was the whole f- scandal with uh, Activision and Infinity Ward, and mm. uh, they sued each other, and they they Vince and Jason left. They were the co-founders and took literally half or more of the team with them to respawn, to respawn the aptly named respawn entertainment so yeah they and they left to start to, and titanfall 
uh, Star Wars would be their first non-Titanfall release. Okay, so that would mean that you know a lot of their resources has been put into first-person combat games. Yeah, on the Source engine. Mm -hmm. That game's built off of v Valve Half-Life tech. So, I mean, even if that's like, you know, if it's not, I, I hope that's kind of what it is, because I know there's like, you know, uh, what's the Star Wars series with, where you're... Uh, Jedi Knight? Yes, Jedi Knight. Those people, no, not Jedi Knight. The one where you're Stormtrooper based and you fight in Stormtrooper plays. Jared loves it. Is it Dark Forces? Or maybe. is that Jedi Knight? Well, that Dark that's, Dark Forces Maybe is, that's just what it is. Jedi Knight 2? Yeah, Jedi, Jedi Knight is Dark Forces 2. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's it's <Sorry>. very confusing. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if it's like a shootery. That should also be on the uh, PC Mini, I think. Yeah. Thank yes. You. Dark Forces was a difficult game, too. It got tough by the end. Those that days. was Doom-like, right? Let's put, yeah. yeah. Let's put Soldier of Fortune on the PC Mini, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's not even Raven's best game. I mean, Heretic was a better game. Hexen was a better game. Would you put Lemmings on it? Oh, yeah. Love Lemmings. I love Lemmings. Um, I'm a little surprised that Respawn is big enough to make two big AAA games at the same time. Well, they've got a second team. That's the thing. Yeah. That Star Wars team that they okay. they wouldn't allow me access to okay, when I was there. That's, it's that's the a wing. whole second team. The wing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The X-Wing. Uh -huh, the <laughs> X-Wing. <laughs> uh, have we heard anything about DICE working on a Battlefront 3? Is that even a known thing? No, it's I am assuming. I am I know what assuming does, but I mean, come on. They have a they have a contract with EA, uh, with Lucas to make Star Wars games for 10 years. We're the five clock's, years the through. The clock's a ticking. Yeah, what five did years we say through last week? We're they, five years through. And they've only released two Battlefront games. Yeah. Which and were, we know how the last one went over. Yeah, exactly. Maybe they want a little bit more distance between the next one. It's mm -hmm. not impossible. I mean, that that could very well be. They may decide, yeah, let's go with Respawn's game this Christmas, yeah. and then we'll give DICE mm -hmm. an extra year. That yeah. could yeah. very well happen. Because they've got Let the internet forget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Battlefield is out this year, this month. So it could be that next year they've got their this Star Wars game that's a little bit more single player focused, and maybe they want to build out Titanfall to be their multiplayer shooter effort for next fall. Oh, not next fall, God. Let's let's not. <laughs> please, EA, <laughs> don't do this again. You know you're going to get a Call of Duty next year. You know, so let's like well, let's not repeat the mistakes of history. I think EA's 2019 is sort of coming into shape. They've got Anthem on February 22nd. Yes. The Battle Royale mode for Battlefield 5 will be next spring. Firestorm. Uh, sea of Solitude is supposed to be an early 2019 game. Excellent. Uh, I bet we'll get the release date for that at the Game Awards. Mm -hmm. Then at E3, they'll have some sort of Unravel 2 smallish game that's like, and it's available oh, uh, now. An an EA original. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Their sports games drop in September. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm going to say Titanfall 3 in October and then Star Wars in November. Right. Yeah, you might be on the be, money with that's that. all they that's do. You know? Their whole year. Yeah. They do like 15 games a year, so that would make total sense. Yeah, so but that's um, yeah. We'll see about Battlefront. That yeah, is yeah. Third. That's a that's a unknown quantity at this yeah. point. All right, now it's time for a new feature that I haven't come up with a name for yet, but I thought it would be fun to revisit older IGN reviews when a game is re-released, like Castlevania Symphony of the Night. So I've dug out How about IGN's, we call it? but first, but first, <laughs> uh, I've dug out IGN's 1997 review of Castlevania Symphony of the Night, reviewed by IGN staff, and this might have been staff. Yeah. And this wasn't done later. This was done in '97. This is '97, which is probably pre-IGN. This is probably like PSX.com or yeah. whatever that was, there was back then. Yeah, there's a couple different satellite sites that got mashed. But we still have this review, so I have some selections from it. Our strapline is: Konami resurrects the ca the classic Castlevania franchise and proves that it's not how it looks; it's how it plays. Okay, I remember reading this with you recently. Yeah. I uh, hated the graphics. It, it reads, The game series has always been renowned for its incredible design, hidden secrets, outstanding visuals, and top-quality gameplay, so it was with much anticipation that I loaded this all-new 32-bit version. They're saying all that about Castlevania, and all that's come out is like Castlevania so, 1, 2, 3, 4. I, yeah. I really think in the future you should have Dan Stapleton on this yeah, segment, because he, yeah. he'll be editing this on the fly. Live editing it, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's really funny, like a series known for all this. I was playing Simon's Quest yesterday, Yeah, and that game's a mess, but I love it. You can't get to Dracula's Castle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I couldn't get to Dracula's Castle. Uh, it continues, my first impression was one of immense disappointment. It looks like the same old 2D platform action as before. The graphics are initially similar looking to SNES and Genesis incarnations of the game. The character animation isn't particularly smooth, and 3D is resigned to limited background effects and the odd special effect. Apart from the various PSX arcade compilations out there, games don't look much more retro than this. Wow. They, I gotta have 3D. I know. <laughs> Fast forward to today when Dead Cells comes out, and we're like, this game looks yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> Uh, Dude, the strapline should have been a miserable pile of secrets. <laughs> well, he didn't know that yet. <laughs> How could he make that the strapline? Uh, well, it's for this game. It continues, but knowing the age-old maxim that it's not how it looks, it's how it plays that matters, I started to play, 
and played and played. The proverb, don't judge a book by its cover, has never been truer than with this game. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a classic. Aww. They're right about that. Nice. Featuring the same type of gameplay and plot premise of previous titles, but taking them to a whole new level of depth, this is an awesome game deserving a veritable thesaurus of praise for its top-notch platforming action. And once you get over the shock that this is a retro 2D game, you begin to really appreciate the detail and subtleties of the graphics. They're not in-your-face effects-laden super lens flare 3D eye candy. Instead, they're gothic, atmospheric, and when it comes down to it, they perfectly suit the game. All those things work together to create what is one of the finest 2D platform games seen yet. It takes up the mantle of 16-bit cl classics like Super Metroid, Super Mario, and of course, other Castlevania games, and goes beyond the restrictions of cartridge memory to reach new heights of depth and quality gameplay. And if you cher cherish that over snazzy 3D graphics, and to be honest, if you don't, then you're missing the point of video games, buying this will make you happier than a pig in er poo. Um... <laughs> The cart. Well, what's the slam against cartridges you got in there? <laughs> because the PlayStation it was Stupid disc cartridges. Yeah, you got like their discs. storage All about issues. That 650 megabytes of yeah. CD-ROM <laughs> storage. <laughs> and we gave it a nine in 1997. Nine, but ugly. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because like that kind of sentiment towards a game doesn't really hold up anymore because we do. I mean, it's well, weird because it's contradictory. Yeah. Um, IGN staff at that time <laughs> uh, was sort of like lambasting it for the graphics, but then yeah. also saying like it's not as important. So I don't really know what to think. But these days we think it's incredibly important, but we just don't admonish things for being retro. Yeah. Like Very confusing. That was an, yeah, an we emotional need, roller We needed coaster. some some distance from 2D games, which was that distance them. was like a bunch of shitty 3D games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, to like actually come back and say, and like, oh, there's them, games yeah. that we respect from that. Mm. But Nintendo kept making 2D games because they they had the Game Boy Advance. Yes. So so during the GameCube era and stuff like that, we got like uh, Metroid Fusion, Metroid uh, Zero Mission, and all those and more Castlevania and, games. And all the Castlevanias, <laughs> Golden Sun, and yeah. you know this yeah, Golden Sun. Yeah, this is like a very influential moment, I think, to say like we can keep making 2D games. Yeah. And thank goodness they still are made because I very much like them. Yeah, me too. All right, it's November 1st. That means it's time to take a stroll to our retro magazine rack. In this episode, we have the November 1998 issue of Nintendo Power. November 1998 was the month that The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was released. Also Half-Life. And also Half-Life. <laughs> but One of Nintendo Power didn't cover <laughs> Half-Life. didn't cover that. <laughs> Look, so, at that. Look how thick that magazine oh, yeah. is. It's yeah. the, it's the this thickest is a good issue ever. 138 yeah. pages, plus there's a Pokemon was like just new, a brand new thing. So there's a whole like collector's uh, little tiny magazine like for Pokemon. Magazine. They call it Pokemon Power. Nice. That's really cool. Because they had to introduce so people there. to Pokemon. Yeah, I, I worked in magazines for so long. And seeing that makes me happy. Yeah. So, of course, this issue is all about... Uh, uh, Ocarina of Time. I remember this ad, the ye snooze, the, ye lose, ye snooze, <laughs> ye lose ad, trying to get people to pre-order the golden cartridge. See, they don't like lean into like old timey uh, phrasing and like Middle English ever with Zelda, so it's weird to see that. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's a fantasy game. <laughs> it's a medieval game. Yeah, it's so silly. It's also an ad for Pokemon, the original Pokemon. That's cool. Yeah. It's pretty good. Wow, we still use that phrase, except instead of got ya, it's got em. For what? It's like, like I don't in, know. Just a, that's it's just, just what a people thing say. People throw around, yeah. In the uh, player's pulse, the letters section, uh, there's a <laughs> there's a, a letter that asks, why do the pictures I print from my Game Boy printer fade? Aww. That came from Max. <laughs> so it's like the ink is so cheap that like it's out in the sun for three hours and it starts to fade. Yeah, the answer is instead of using ink, the Game Boy printer heat transfers oh, images right. onto its special thermal paper, which, if you touch too much, can cause your pictures to fade. To save yourself the worries. Touching your, fix your pictures. Avoid excessive handling of the heat-sensitive paper. <laughs> That's weird. What it's a strange know. technological moment that was. Uh, this is from William. Uh, they say, My friends say that other systems are better than the Nintendo 64 because they can display cool video cutscenes. I don't have any doubt the N64 is the best system out there, but I wonder why Nintendo does not put full motion videos in its games. Is it because of the space? This brings me back to an IGN <laughs> review I just read. Uh, Nintendo Power says, FMV scenes are no stranger to Nintendo 64 games. Just look at the intro and two finales in Banjo-Kazooie or the multiple endings in Mortal Kombat 4. I think they're confusing what FMV... Because Banjo-Kazooie doesn't have any FMV. No. In engine. It's just, yeah, it's like a, it's not full motion video. Well, right? we'll have to beat Mortal Kombat 4 to see how yeah. they did it. Yeah. I think they're mistaken about that. The multiple endings of Mortal Kombat 4? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, this reader was so excited about the impending release of Ocarina of Time that they wrote the Ocarina of Rhyme. 
Okay. And it goes, Let's people it. are waiting, holding vigils at the store, waiting for the arri- arrival of Zelda 64. There they are shivering from head to toe in anticipation of the genius of Shigeru Miyamoto. For the land of Hyrule is a magical place. Players move around in perfect 3D space. They can meet local villagers and see their smiles or go to a field and see for miles. Now the release date has been set. I hope this release date can be met. For us, there is a lesson to be learned that true life begins on November 23rd. Wow. Can I let you guys in on a little secret? Yeah. I'm gonna bet lunch that that was written by one of the editors. You think so? So oh, when no. when this the is a dirty little I, secret, I, of, me, I did. Yep. Yeah, so I ran the letter section uh, for a while, and if the if you, you were a letter this, receiver, if this was and especially in like the pre email, like yeah. before people could easily get a hold of you, if you didn't get enough like good letters yeah. in a month, yeah, make them up. Oh boy, <laughs> make them up. Yeah, Shady. The first I've ever heard of that. Yeah. That's great. Man. Did you have to do the letter art too? It's not as accessible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you write the make, design all the letter art? That's pretty good. Yeah. Did you do? No, like I didn't do envelopes? that. I'm not that talented. I want to. Like, I'm going to make the best Pikachu ever. <laughs> I want our listeners and viewers to know I have never made up a letter <laughs> for this show. And Big Tony style does exist. He exists. Uh, we have an ad for Body Harvest on the Nintendo 64, and they have some um, quotes from some outlets like Next Generation Online, Game Pro, and. ING64.com. <laughs> <laughs> this says ING. For your, finance, for your finance needs. ING64.com. Uh, did you approve that quote? <laughs> yeah, I went back in time and uh, I let them know. So when we get stuff like this, we uh, now we get emailed and, and they politely ask, can we use a quote from your review? And sometimes there's some, some funny business in yeah. there. It'll be like, we said like, impossibly good, but it actually said, impossibly bad, <laughs> but good thing I'm not going to play this. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Possibly. So that's the ellipses, I guess, yes. yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Nintendo Power is not around anymore for us to sue them. Neither is ING64. So I think we should sue Nintendo Force. <laughs> Let's not do that. <laughs> uh, on page Nintendo 44, it's really good posters. Shout on, out. Yeah, that's true. On page 44, it's our first of many appearances in this issue of Superman 64. Oh, man. Largely to believe to be one of the worst games of all time. Because once again, there's a centerfold in this issue, and it is Superman 64. <laughs> Well, the other ad is appropriate because he actually looks pretty angry in there. Yeah, yeah, he knows. He knows he what knows he did. Coming. There's a little banjo. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole spread on banjo in here. Uh, they introduced the Game Boy Color. Did you know the Game Boy Color came out the same month as Ocarina of Time? Wow. Well, and Pokemon, right? Like well, and Pokemon, it was yeah. there. I, just, I didn't. I didn't realize that they were coming out what, at the same time. Uh, that's. Um, oh, they're showing the reissue of the Zelda game, uh, which is Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, there's this whole spread on the Game Boy Color and about how it has different color modes, mm-hmm. right? You can change the different colors. And, uh, Great solutionary. And then they're talking about the games that are going to be on the Game Boy Color, like Carrot Crazy, which is another Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle game. Yeah. Okay. Shadowgate Classics, which I love. Mortal Kombat 4, which we were just talking nice. about, yeah. On Game Boy. <laughs> Gex 3D. Lots of really good ones on here. Pitfall. In- oh, and Pitfall 3D. And th- no, this isn't 3D. In the slightest. <laughs> it's called no. 3D? They call it Pitfall 3D. Okay. No, yeah. Not actually 3D. And a preview of Superman 64. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I tell you, it's all over this issue. People, If only people knew what they were in store for. Uh, I like this on page 95 is an ad for Sears. This is yeah. a Sears ad, which just went into bankruptcy. Yeah. 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 That thing there is a little uh, Pokemon handheld and I was just looking this up the other day because I'm really interested. They made two different Tamagotchi knockoffs with like keeping Pikachu alive and healthy. And uh, I haven't ever seen those. <laughs> I, I really want to see this. They should bring it back. Tamagotchi is still popular. On page 122, they review Ocarina of Time. So in Nintendo Power's review of Ocarina mm. of Time, Fair they, and balanced. they gave it a 9.5 okay. total, like average. That's it? They did in, they, so they did the EGM thing where they had four oh, different, here. five different reviewers. So check this out. Ocarina of Time. The different reviewers gave it a 10, 9, 9, 9.5, and an 8. One of these guys thought it was an 8. Are they named? No, just, they just have initials. Mm. So you'd have to go back to, to the staff page. Yeah. Is, what's yeah. the to comment, protect their what, families. What's the comment from Mr. and Mrs. 8? No, they don't get their own specific comments. But So they, gra- they rate the game on graphics, play control, game design, satisfaction, sound, and then their comments. On satisfaction, they said, you've got to love this game. <laughs> That's not a critique. That's a demand. Tina, you've got to love this game. <laughs> you got to love this game. 
Um, what did I want? You gotta oh. love it. Oh, and else. then they also. To be fair, I can't rate games on satisfaction. That's a ridiculous. Yeah, that's way a to really interesting <laughs> metric. We should tell Dan. Yeah. Uh, on they also reviewed the Game Boy Color. They gave it an 8.5. Although they have nothing but glowing things to say about it. They say, developers are lining up to make games for this system. The golden age of Game Boy is at hand. All I can say is that I'm stoked. Definitely one of Nintendo's greatest accomplishments. Game Boy has become a man. 8.5. I'm sorry, Game Boy has become a man? That's Nintendo Power. 1998. Because it's a play on Game Boy? Yeah. So, uh, Game Man? Here's Game a little man. behind the scenes thing. Game Man. At magazines, sometimes when uh, they w- need to review a game and they just don't have enough time, they just have uh, people that would normally write letters to them review the game. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Which is why sometimes they don't get enough letters because those pe- people are yeah, busy, they're busy reviewing, reviewing the games. The games. Yeah. That's why. Sense. It makes sense now. And that brings us to Video Game 20 Questions. But first, uh, our suggestion comes from Mark in Stourbridge, UK. And he has a question first before we get to his uh, game suggestion. He says, I love the segments of the show looking at old gaming magazines, which I too adored as a child. However, in a pre-internet era, era, we were oblivious to the inaccurate information. It didn't really matter what they printed. What is the process for IGN publishing articles now and how much fact-checking and Q&A do you have to go through? QA. So, uh, QA. QA. Yeah. yeah. Quality and assurance. Uh, I think it's usually, would you say, Tina, it's, it's up to the individual. The individual editors are expected to do their due diligence. Right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it depends on the, I guess it depends on the article. Um, like if it's a news post, there's an editor that normally oversees that kind of thing. Um, there's editors for each section. Like Ryan will look over all of our preview content. Dan will look over all of our uh, review content. So it's mm-hmm. up to the writer and the editor in that process and the editing mm-hmm. process. But it's so much easier now that it's the internet because you could just go back and edit whatever has been factually incorrect and yeah. do a little update like we got this one wrong or there's a new statement or whatever else. Especially these days where news is so developing um, on in such a quick, rapid way. So we can just go back and constantly update, which is nice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, magazine world was tough because I also come from the magazine world, and you just had to get it right. Yeah, once once it's once <laughs> well, the magazine goes to or bed, or if you that's didn't, it. it's yeah. just like, well, I guess there's nothing we can do about it now. Yeah. But it goes through like in the magazine world, it goes through a meticulous editing oh, process. Like three different people will read at something. least, at least, yeah, yeah. and well, you deliberate over it for like a month. Before I would say probably. the minute, yeah, the three would be the minimum. Five would be <clears throat> five revisions before something's done would be uh, yeah. more normal. So you were working in magazines in the two. Th- Thousands, two thousand two to when I came here in twenty twelve. Mm, I, I, I'm sure their uh, quality assurance had improved greatly because, like, when we read some of these old magazines from like the early nineties, I don't think anybody was checking any of that stuff. Yeah, I, I can't uh, can't speak to those. <laughs> it also depends on the publisher. So, like, I started off as an intern at Condé Nast, like various like Wired mm. and Condé Nast Traveler, and as an intern, it was my duty to do fact checking. So, for Traveler, I'd be calling up hotels and resorts and whatever else and asking wow. them a billion questions and fact checking all of this stuff for everyone else. That's cool. That sounds like it'd be kind of like fun and like enjoyable. You do learn a lot, um, but yeah, it's it's not the most fun. Like, I prefer yeah. to write the articles and have someone else do my grunt work. But gotcha. you, know, you got to start, start somewhere. Start at the bottom. Yeah, yeah you got to start somewhere. Up. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, that brings us to our video game twenty questions round. It comes from Mark Stourbridge in the UK. Hint: Let the questioning begin. So maybe it's going to be a rare game. Yeah. Be a- <laughs> Was this game developed in Japan? No. <laughs> Sounds like Banjo Kazooie. <laughs> I think we just go ahead and guess. <laughs> We're already there. Uh, was this game released before the year two thousand? No. Okay. Is it a platform exclusive? No. Right. Um, is this a, a game with 3D graphics? Yes. Okay, so eliminate two thousand or n- year two thousand or newer, 3D multi-platform, mm-hmm. not developed in Japan. Mm-hmm. Does it have multiplayer? No. Is it part of a franchise? Yes. Uh, it makes it harder. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> was it was it was it released uh, after during or after the year 2010? During or after the year 2010? Yes. Okay. So we're looking at something newer, this generation or last? Yeah. Well, the second half, the back half of last. Is this based on a license that's not a video game? No. Uh, so it's part of a franchise. There's so many games that fit all the things. Yeah, that we've got. I mean, it's great that we've gotten these answers. It's just yeah. like to narrow this down is going to be really tough. 
Um, do you kill stuff in this game? No. Mm. It's nice. It's <laughs> what franchises do you not murder stuff? A lot of Nintendo ones, Puzzle but stuff. those are rare, you know, rarely not made in Japan. And um, is it a puzzle game? Um, Ooh. not in this, not in like the strictest sense. Okay, not there, in the genre sense. Of the there word. are puzzles in the game, but it's okay. not a puzzle game, and that's okay. ten. Okay. All right, so it could be. Do you? Uh, uh, it's not an. It's not a adventure game, probably. Yeah, it sounds. Is it a platformer? A three D platformer? No. Okay. I think we need to get a genre or whatever we're gonna get. Uh, that's the situation usually at question ten if we're at the point like this. Genre or get. Really you want to narrow down so. genre? Yeah, or, or we get really lucky. Yeah. It's good to know I mean, that it has puzzle elements. Portal. And it's not a platformer. Portal is a puzzle game. Totally. So he's. I was thinking Portal. Yeah. But it's. I think it. I mean, it's not a sh in the strict sense of the word a puzzle, but. Mm -hmm. Sure it is. <laughs> it's like the yeah. whole game it's, is puzzle. Yeah. In Damon's <laughs> description, not like a classic. It has puzzles. Yeah. But so does Half Life Two. You know. Yeah. Um, does the game take place in the first person perspective? No. Okay. There you go. That helps. Yeah. yeah first person. Hmm. Um. No killing, but there is pu there are puzzles. Yeah, uh, is this we get publisher down too? That would be really helpful. Um, it's not made in Japan, so you can probably eliminate. So it's not Capcom, Capcom Konami, and, yeah, stuff Square. Like that. Well, not. Or uh, or we could say, is the developer still around? That's a helpful one. All right. Well. Is the developer still around? Yes. Okay. So. And he did say developer, not publisher. So the developer is still around. Yes. Okay. That's cool. All right. That's. That limits it. Does it? <laughs> We're down to, all right, we got seven well, it left. Be, yeah. yeah. It could be Ubisoft, mm -hmm. EA. So, yeah. There's not that many companies. I mean, <laughs> that could be an Activision. Game. Yeah, sorry. It could be smaller, though. It could be like a PC game that's on everything, whatever. Angry Birds. Um, what do we do from here? Should we ask if you play as like a human? Or yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Do you play as a human? Yes. Okay. See, that's not helpful. Though. Yeah, because <laughs> most things you play as a human. It's just hard because like these are we have it narrowed down to a huge amount of games. Yeah, it's a puzzle we franchise narrowed. in the third person perspective where you're as human. puzzles. I wouldn't. I don't think we can go full puzzle for it. But you don't kill anybody. <laughs> what else yeah, do you do in yeah, games? That's helpful. It doesn't like have racing. multiplayer. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Part of yeah. A, part well. of a. Um. But uh. Is there a version of this game? It's a game of the series on the Switch now. No. We always ask the "was it well well received" question. Yeah, I don't, but I that think, still doesn't narrow it down. Yeah, we need to get help. serious. We have five more, right? Five I think left. We it's lucky it's with in a publisher. franchise. That's that's yeah. like that's the part that's sort of and it's not it's giving Switch. me pause. Something hasn't been poured to Switch is like that's pretty helpful, but it's still very Fruit ninja. No, you play as a human in third person. <laughs> just throwing out random. 3D graphics. Yeah. But something like that might really match yeah. this, you know? Um, like, if you go publisher by publisher, like, every Assassin's Creed game, you're killing things. Yeah. Splinter Cell, Ghost yeah, Recon, no, yeah. any Tom Clancy anything, you're killing things. So it's just not Ubisoft. Oh, we we ask it, if it's an indie game. Yeah. But Does that help? Because if it's an indie game, I think we're getting closer. Uh, but like I don't know the fran like the fact that it's part of a franchise. That's true. Kind of, Most yeah limits that. So I feel like it's not an indie game. So I feel like is it an indie game? Uh, by <laughs> indie game, do yeah. you mean? Yeah. Do you mean? This is so helpful. Oh boy. Hold on, hold on. Okay. By indie game, do you mean it? It like was not published by a big develop big publisher. Okay, so it's like a Sony. I don't get why what? you'd have to clarify this. I do. It's, well, it's I a do legitimate because, follow up. Yeah, because it's not like because your publisher can still make you not indie. So that's that's like what it Bungie is. Bungie is basically. technically an indie developer that, mm -hmm. that an Activision publishes. Oh my god! It's like what? Come or like, on! Or that, Look, I guess. It's true. <laughs> or think about like Cuphead. Like they were that game was published by Microsoft, right? So is it still an no, indie game? No, you play as a human. <laughs> so it's like so I'm trying to. All right. So get your definition of indie? Uh, yeah, it, it would have to be uh, uh, developed by. Well, yeah, it can't be published by like a giant company. Then no. Wait, so, so it so wasn't uh, published by a pu publisher? He's saying a so big publisher like a Bungie published or something. a smaller c c developer's game. That's okay. So it was. So yeah, I mean, if it was a franchise. I'm saying, yeah. yeah. I'm saying it's not an indie game by Sam's definition. Yes. Okay. 
That's kind of cool. Then it's like a smaller thing that that's gotten sequels that's been and it's puzzly and could be like Professor Layton. How's Japan? Scribble knots. Scribble knots we've had before, but it'd be fun to do it again. <laughs> Actually, there is a version of Scribble knots on the Switch though, and you already asked. Oh, that's cool. That's good to know. Do you play as a? Is that a human? <laughs> You're uh, what's his name? Cartoon human. Uh, I forget yeah. his name. You got a rooster hat. He has a name, and he I can't yeah, remember what does. it is. He, he does. I guess Dave. he looks human like. Um, Could it be then? We've well, but had, we've heard it's not. On, it's on Switch. You yeah. said there's a, oh. there, 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 yeah. There was the, a recent Scribble Knots that I'm almost positive came out on Switch. This is tough. I don't know where to go from here. Yeah. We could ask about the graphical style because we can get lucky if it's like yeah, cel yeah. shaded, you know. Right, right. Or we can keep on going with. We could know, ask if do you have a. You wear a hat. Yeah, we Justin's could question. ask that. Um, my goodness. Should we narrow down the time frame further? Yeah, that, that would be helpful. So we already know it's after in or after 2010. Uh, was it, so current gen. Was it released? Oh, yeah, you could just ask if it's current gen. Yeah. Was it released on the current generation of hardware? Yes. Okay. Got three more, guys. That's actually kind of crazy. It's not. Oh, and it's not on Switch. Yeah. WTF. <laughs> yeah. But that means, could it be like, when he says multi-platform, it could be on Xbox and PC. That's true. And are there indie games that are published by Microsoft? Could it be No Man's Sky? No, that's third-person perspective. That's a good one. No, because it's third-person perspective. You don't kill things. Well, actually, you no, yeah, you do shoot. Uh, oh, yeah, you can switch. You shoot the creatures. You like But he said no to first-person, so. Mm -hmm. that kind of. But it wasn't first-person yeah. originally. Yeah, creature. That's a really good one. Yeah, it, kind of, it feels like it fits but there's a lot not really of puzzles in it. They're kind of. But that would be a really good example because yeah. the publisher was originally Sony, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Mm -hmm. True. So are there Microsoft games like that? I mean, you have uh, in, Inside. Inside. Uh, that has puzzles. But it's mm. not 3D. Or it's not. Uh, you said it's 3D. Oh, it's, yeah. it's not part of a franchise, though, because it's not directly right. connected right. to Sky yeah. is not part of a franchise. That's true, either. yeah. Well, yeah. That's really tough. I don't think we're going to get this one. Yeah. But we got really close. <laughs> Are you Are, already determining that? I don't know. Yeah. We? I don't, I don't know, know about that. Well, that. By that, I mean we're really close to this game being over. <laughs> True. Three questions. Okay. Uh, was this well received? Yes. It doesn't help. So it's a game we probably liked. Maybe. That's and we should thought. remember it if it's part of a franchise and not some one-off thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Man, it's not Spider Man. It's not. Uh, yeah. It's not Gears or Halo or. Uh, I mean, those those aren't. Yeah, yeah no, it's just no it's a smaller. I can feel it's like a smaller game that may have been published by somebody bigger. It's got to be something like No Man's it, Sky. Wait, did we say is is it? Did we get it if it's three D? Yeah, it's three. It is. Mm. So it's not Fez. Yeah, there's like. Although Fez. that was last gen anyway. What are all the Bastion games and stuff like that? Are there any sequels in there? Uh, not sequels, but yeah, that's true. That's right. The, the franchise thing keeps yeah. coming back to that. There's nothing. I don't know what to do. I'm Wa stuck. Is it Guacamelee? <laughs> I'm not, gonna, I'm so not asking that, but 3D. I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> There's fighting. It's There's two of those. It's yeah. like, yeah, you try to there think of indie of games with least. sequels yeah, yeah. that are multi-platform. Overcooked. I have a big Switch. publisher behind you it. You don't kill yeah. anything in Overcooked. Multiplayer. Oh, it's, it's already dead. On Switch. <laughs> it's already dead. Uh, you, you got a question wow, and a guess. So All right. Because we're not going to get it. What's going to be our final question? Ugh, I don't know. Nothing's going to help at this point. Uh, do you play as a woman? Yes. Oh. <laughs> what a shot in the dark. Are we going to get this? All right. Oh, you got to guess. Um, Tomb Raider. One La guess. Lara murder stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, it's slipping Tomb my Raider, memory. But what's she, the, she kills. What's the one where you're like flying platform. around and it's like really, um, ugh, it's totally similar. Oh, no, it was it was like on oh, PSP Gravity original. Rush. Yes. But that's de developed in Japan. Oh, yeah. Fair point. Yeah. But it would have fit a lot. To recap, of those, right? what can I remember that you've answered? You play as a woman. It was released on current gen consoles. It's not first person. It wasn't developed in Japan. Then you were part of a franchise. It's not an indie game. Hellblade? Oh, Hellblade? Yeah. Uh, it might be. And you, and you Actually, it, yeah, it, 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 it might but be Hellblade. Oh, no, but that's so not part of a things. fight. Ghosts. It's not part of a no, franchise. But you kill things. Hellblade. And it's not okay. part of a franchise. Hellblade's all of it right. except right. the franchise part. Because it was, yeah, it was published yeah. by Sony, but they're an indie developer. I know. No, Microsoft bought them, but it's perfect. Oh, that was, we were so close. We were you guys so almost got so it. Far Should like, we reveal it? Should we reveal a game? We're going to, unless we have a guess. What are we literally going to guess that's. 
Peggle. <laughs> no, that's a female avatar. <laughs> hey, I play Peggle. That makes a count. That's true. That's true. Uh, that's in a franchise. It wouldn't be one of the Assassin's Creeds because there's a lot of murder in it. Um, I don't think we're going to guess it, but I feel really bad quitting. All right. We're quitting. Is we're it? Quitting? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quitting? Yeah. Okay. Released in 2015 for everything except Switch, including <laughs> last-gen consoles. Uh, published by Square Enix. It's episodic. It's Life is Strange? Life is strange. Yeah. Life is Strange. Oh. I don't think I would have got there. Yeah, no. Because no. the... <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. At one point you said it can't be an adventure game, but it's Ooh. pretty much a, that kind of an adventure game. That's where we game. got stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Damn. That was a good one. Yeah. That was a good one. That yeah. was a good one. That was a really, yeah. really good game. We have to add, is it episodic to our rotation? Oh, my God. Well, there, are, but there aren't that many. <laughs> <laughs> narrow it down yeah. to 99.99. My next question is going to be, can we have an extra 10 questions? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a genie. Yeah, exactly. That's really good. I wish for infinite wishes. <laughs> yeah. People do write us with like cheats sometimes. They're like, you shouldn't mm. ask it this way. You should ask it right, this right, way. Right, right, yeah. Like, but honestly, as soon as before, I get in front of these lights, I forget. Like yeah. the before 2000, I always like to just ask, like, is it current gen consoles? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then one trick that's totally uh, legal, is, and although it wouldn't have helped you this time, is uh, towards the end, it's have we mentioned the yeah, game? Yeah, we do that sometimes. Like, I love that. This yeah, round. That's I, one of yeah, my new that favorites. one's good. That one's pretty good. And also, it was it could it be in this Nintendo Power? <laughs> that one's really good too. <laughs> Thank you for the suggestion, Mark in Starbridge, UK. If you have your own suggestions, you can always reach us at the email address gamescoop at ign.com or at megacops at ign.com. That's all the scoops we have for you this week. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Ryan. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out. <laughs>